Hi, I'm Lise Colucci, one of the life coaches at Queen Being. Today on the program, I talk to a survivor about triangulation and recovery after narcissistic abuse and finding self-worth again. If that sounds good, hit subscribe and let's go. I'm talking to Diane today. Hi, Diane. Hi, Lisa. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Good. You wanted to talk today about triangulation. Is that correct? Yes, that and smear campaigns. Okay. So what, what did, what's going on with that? What, did, what was your experience? It's taken, first of all, I was with the narcissist for 10 years. So mm -hmm. very long time. Never married. We just dated. And um, probably five or six years ago, it was brought to my attention that he was a narcissist. And therefore that I had heard many, many different times, but I never really understood the full meaning behind mm -hmm. somebody being a true full-blown narcissist. So when I started doing research, it was just a lot of aha and light bulb moments going off. And it finally gave me a piece of my sanity back because I've always had problems with low self-esteem, um, not, not a very good ego. I always want people to like me, to please others. And so if any criticism came my way, I never really questioned. I always gave it value and I always internalized it. And I always took on that, wow, I'm the problem. Mm -hmm. And he was very, very good at that. It's something that he must have picked up on me that I hadn't even picked up. So throughout the relationship, you know, he would use a lot of talking about me behind my back, um, only telling half stories so that I truly did look like a crazy person. But then he would leave out his part in everything and all the things that he did prior to me doing whatever it was that I did on that, that certain occasion. And then to top it off, we would have arguments. He would subtly bring in other people saying, oh, this is why people don't want to hang out with us. This is why they all say that you can't have any fun. They all say that um, you're not a nice person. You're a, I don't know if you can use this word, bitch. Um, and instead of sitting back and being able to say, you know what, that doesn't even make sense, I internalized it. And it really made me question my judgment with everything and it, mm -hmm. that I think is really what was the glue that kept me stuck to him because the outside world viewed him as this great person well then he must be a great person they all saw him as a great person so then maybe I must truly be the problem and that was a real that was an issue for me because I I, I just wanted to fix that part so he was using triangulation as a way to devalue in that yes. situation yeah yes yeah yeah and he used he found your insecurity and he went after that yes he would watch for your reaction and then yes see that it was a way to control you and a way to manipulate yes mm -hmm. yes because for certain things i can i can hold my own and and i can kind of remain stable emotionally across the board. But when something hits that, that injured inner child, mm -hmm. then I just react, you know, right, and, and right. I react completely different. I don't have that. I don't show that self-control any longer. I would react. He knew he hit the bullseye. Right. And there's, there's no internal resource in your, um, in your, in, inside of you that can. When in the relationship that started to, Turn, I'm not really sure, um, but I would say it was yeah. probably a good nine years. Yes, it's piece by piece by piece that you don't you don't know what's happening. And you know, my my job, I, I was an educator for 26 years, and I taught mm -hmm. with behavior and emotional disorders. Mm -hmm. And it was my job to observe them and pick their triggers. But when it came to my own life, I failed miserably. Well, I can see when something is systematically and very slowly built upon, we don't, um, it's not the same as watching from afar and, and finding triggers. 
you know, if you're, you're stepping into somebody else and observing, stepping into their world and observing a classroom full of children who um, have triggers, you're, first of all, you're removed from the trigger because it's not your trigger. And second of all, you are looking at, um, you're looking at in a situation, uh, sort of like in a laboratory sense, like you're, you're watching for specific things. You have a checklist of things that you can look for. You know, you know, from what you've been told by other people. So it's not just you yourself having to piece it out. And it's, it's very hard when it's within yourself and something has been incrementally increased Mm -hmm. because we're Mm -hmm. groomed at that point. Right. 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 And so by the, it really can take retrospect to see what happened, you know, looking back. Right. Looking back, you can see it maybe the way you see it in a classroom, watching for children's triggers. But when you're in the moment, I mean, it's not really, I wouldn't classify that as a failure on your part, but more of a, um, this is how narcissists work. And this is how, the, this is why the abuse is so pervasive and so painful because we can step into a situation being one person. And by the time we come out the other side, we look like someone else, you know? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes, yes, and it's not necessarily a person that you really like. Right, right. Because you're being- able, like the last couple of years, I would I do a lot of talk, and when I would be down there with him, it would be a kind of thought in my head that I don't even like who I am mm-hmm. when I'm with him. Mm-hmm. He didn't bring out anything good in me. He just brought out ugly because you know when he would attack, your natural reaction is to defend and attack back. And that's, that's not who I am. And it's not definitely not who I want to be. And at the time though, are you feeling like though that is your fault? That you're not who you want to be and because of something inside yourself, or are you seeing at the time that it's, I'm not, I'm not my best around this person. I think once I realized that I didn't like who I was when I was with him, by the time that was a conscious thought, I knew that it was because of him, because I know how I am when I'm around other different people. Mm -hmm. And it became a question in my mind, then what am I doing? And I think for me, that's where, yes, I pretty much lost my life. um, That's where like, I really started to feel isolated because Mm -hmm. the friends that I had prior to meeting him did not Mm -hmm. like him. My kids did not like him because they saw him for what he was and they saw how he treated me Mm -hmm. and they really didn't anything to do. So I slowly withdrew, not from my kids, but I withdrew from my support system, my friends, my certain family members and spent more time down there. And so eventually that was my whole entire life. And so I knew that when I cut off the relationship, I wasn't just cutting that off. I was cutting off, it was like those 10 years never even existed. And now I'm left to start over, which I see now as a good thing, but it took me a long time to get to the place where I could see it as a good thing. Right. I think that isolation is another point in this is that a lot of times a narcissist will isolate the survivor from the life that they knew and create a sort of insulated world where they're the center of it. Mm -hmm. Which, if you leave them, leaves you completely alone. It does. But I was alone even when I was with him. Right. Because even though we had these friends together down there, I still, because they thought so highly of him, Mm -hmm. it's not even like I had them to go to. You know, so I was really completely and utterly alone that loneliness that you feel when you're with them and within a community because there's no one to turn to, there's no one that will see the truth. And if you open your mouth, you're either complaining or looking like you're in a bad mood or you're just a complaining person or mm-hmm. it, it becomes negative about you if you say anything. Um, that, right. That's more alone and more isolating than just taking off and being alone. Don't you think? It, it really is. Yeah. It is. And I was angry, very, very angry that they would be so nice to him when I knew it was another side. Yeah. And so you said that you said it kept you in the relationship longer. How, how did that come about? I, what I really in the end struggled with were 
people who I believe are my friends. Mm -hmm. I, I do believe that, but I, you know, they don't understand narcissism like we do because mm -hmm. um, it is such a blanket term. It bothered me that he would go and say things about me, tell half truths, and that that would be their. So it was their opinion of me that bothered me more more than what he thought of me. And so I felt like I needed to just keep proving I'm not this bad person. I'm not this bad person. I'm not this bad person. What has helped you the most work through that part? What did you have to learn or discover? Or are you still working with that part? It's still a process. And I think for me, it's always going to be a process. Um, I kind of had um, a break through oh maybe like nine months or so with mm -hmm. my therapist and when I look back way back into my childhood I've always had issues with feeling like I just never fit in I mean going like way way back like first second third grade I, I can remember when that finally came the format with my therapist mm -hmm. I just really work on it doesn't matter. You know, my kids love me. I have a small group of friends who love me unconditionally, no matter you know what I do. They they support me a hundred percent in what whatever I do, um, and that's that's what I focus on. And I I try not to put so much value on what other people think, and I just start putting more value on what I think. Right. I think that what you're talking about is really important for people to see where in their own life um, they have a hook with a narcissist. What, what is, what's keeping you in the situation and when you can see it. So talk to me about how, how did you realize that this was going on with you, that you were feeling that these people around, these people who were being triangulated in mattered more to you than your own well-being? their opinion of you mattered more to you than your own well-being. How did you realize that? And how did you get out? How did you get, how did you break that cycle? I actually, I had the opportunity. So I was very good. There was a set of friends down there that he and I met together mm -hmm. where before I was always, I was joining his cliques all the time, mm -hmm. but this was a couple that he and I met together and they were always my safe place where I knew that if I went when were with them, I, I never felt alone because I always felt like they always had my back too. They might not confront him, but I knew that they had my back. Well, when we broke at one point, she completely turned her back on me. And that, would, that, hurt. that hurt more than losing him. Because I felt like that was a very true, true friendship. Mm -hmm. And when I got back with the narcissist, we were together one time and we never really went into depth over our differences, but she turned to me and she said, I just want you to know that it's not you. We thought it was you, but we know that we were wrong, meaning her and her husband. And that that meant the world to me and that right there taught me that i don't i don't need to shout from the rooftops what he is i just need to be me one of the things i'm hearing is the way a narcissist will groom you will they find your your weakness they'll find your insecurity mm -hmm. and once they have that they can they can use it and groom it and and um that in your particular situation he took you away from any security you had in in the relationships you had built in your life which is a big deal to you because you've always struggled with relationships and feeling um, like you fit in within them like you fit like you said you've struggled with um, feeling like you have a place within a group and mm -hmm. he took you away from the comfort of the group you already had and Put you in the middle of his group, which he owns, mm -hmm. of course, because narcissists own everybody that is around them. Mm -hmm. So he put you in his circle so that he could say, those are my friends, not yours. 
and allowing you to be friends with these people and giving you a place there, which made you give you comfort, right? He'd give you this, yeah. give you this place, this thing you've always longed for, this belonging that comes with ease is given to you and handed over, but it's his world. Those are his pawns that he has placed around you that are now, you are allowed to be around unless he says you're not allowed. And then, and then you meet these, these two people that are outside of that together and the whole thing is different. And you, and, and that realization mm -hmm. that, that mm -hmm. you're a valid person and, yes. and that these people could give you that validation. That's awesome. That's, um, that was a lucky experience to have within that confinement of, it really was. Yeah. Yeah. So did, were you, um, to her one day, the what? I tried to explain that to her um, one day, and I even told her that she was my, my safe place. But I couldn't have. When you, when you finally did leave, how was that as far as the smear campaign and um, the triangulation went? Did he continue? I'm, I'm sure. I don't ask. I, I will still text a couple of people that I felt like I made true. I formed true friendships with. I will text them. We mm -hmm. don't ever talk about him. I, I might have to let them go at some point, but um, but I'm okay if he does. So I don't really, at this point, I don't care anymore what he has to say about me. Mm -hmm. I'm okay with it. And whatever they choose to believe, and that, that's on them, and that's what they choose to believe. But it's taken me a very long time to get to this point. Mm -hmm. And it feels great. <laughs> so what would you say to pe to somebody who, what would you say to somebody who struggles with feeling like they don't fit in or they need to be a certain way in order for people to like them or um, really could be victim to a narc triangulating and creating smear campaign around them could be more, more vulnerable to that. What would you say to someone to help them seek a way to heal themselves? Try your best to step away from the chaos because when you're in the midst of the chaos, you don't even know you're drowning. Um, mm -hmm. And you can't save yourself when you're drowning. Therapy, if you can. And if you can only find one person who truly supports you, spend time with that person and let that person fill up your bucket instead of hanging with people who just keep kicking your bucket over. Mm -hmm. it, it took me a very long time to get to this place. It took me a long time to forgive myself for even let it happen. Mm -hmm. But when you get there, it is like the best feeling. It's the best feeling in the world, it really is. And now I'm starting to do things that I enjoy things that I, I gave up. I'm finding passions inside of myself. I didn't even know I had because he would never support me or even let me explore because it would take me away from him. And that was right. threatening. And I feel like I'm, I'm stronger and mm -hmm. I'm, I'm working on, on me as mm -hmm. opposed to just existing. And it's probably the first time ever that I've like really ever truly, truly worked on myself and really tried to understand the term self-love. I would walk around and say, oh, I love myself. I love myself. No, I, I, I really, I, I probably didn't. Right, right. But I'm learning to. Right. Because the, we, get, we get identified with the person who feels like they don't fit in more than we do even seeing who we are. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, yep. and, and so I didn't know, we, I think for a long time, I didn't even know who I was because right. I was too busy trying to fit in. Right. And so now I'm just me. And if, if I'm a round peg and you're a square hole, well, then I'll just move on to the next pegboard and hopefully there'll be round holes too. Right. Right. And maybe um, as, you, as you grow with this and you discover different parts of yourself because you're not sort of having these ruminating thoughts of negativity about yourself and not feeling like you don't fit in and whatever feelings come around that self-loathing or self criticism, um, judging that 
as you open up other parts of yourself, do you feel like you're attracting different types of people and different types of experiences into your life? Oh, yeah, yes, abso absolutely. Yeah. Better, absolutely. better, mm -hmm. more positive, I would hope. Yes, more positive, more supportive. Mm -hmm. um, Thanks for watching again. My name is Lise Colucci. For information about me, about coaching, about group coaching, or to be a guest survivor on this program, see the links below. Don't forget to subscribe. Bye-bye.